Hi all, this is Mohit and I am welcoming you to the new course Dynamics of Machinery. This is an extension or next level course to the uh, so-called uh, subject Kinematics of Machinery or Theory of Machines which you have studied uh, previously. So let's see what is the difference between this Dynamics of Machinery and Kinematics of Machinery. So in Kinematics of Machinery, we were studying or analyzing the mechanism from a geometric point of view only. That means we are considering the motions of this mechanism which are happening but we are not uh, taking into consideration what forces are producing this motion we are only studying the displacement velocity and acceleration of different parts or links of the mechanism for example if you are having some diagram mechanism then uh, you were uh, constructing the configuration diagram first and then you have constructed the velocity diagram and acceleration diagram subsequently and you are calculating only these parameters displacement velocity acceleration but you are not calculating the forces which are acting in this mechanism but in uh, this dynamics of machinery we will be having some uh, mechanism and motions will be there that means there are also velocity an analysis acceleration analysis will be there but in addition to that, we will be calculating the different forces which are acting on different links of the mechanism. That means the force which are transmitted or force which are causing the motion will also be analyzed. So here also we need to construct the configuration diagram. Here you can see one configuration diagram where some four bar mechanism is subjected to some external force. And whenever this external force is acting, so here an external force is acting on the link CD and that will be causing some force to transmit through this link BC or AB. So we need to evaluate the forces which are passed through these links. So we need to construct the diagrams called free body diagram. So here free body diagrams of all uh, links will be considered separately and we need to calculate such forces. So this kind of things are coming in the force analysis or in the subject dynamics of machinery. So here we will be seeing the different modules uh, which are coming under this subject. So in first module we will be studying the static force analysis and in the second module we will be studying the dynamic force analysis of mechanism and we will be seeing what is the difference between the static force analysis and dynamic force analysis and also uh, the force analysis gears will be discussed in module 2. In module 3, the analysis of flywheels and balancing. Balancing of reciprocating as well as rotating mass will be studied in this one. And in module 4, the gyroscopic principle or the gyroscopic action on different vehicles, aeroplanes, ships will be discussed in this one. And next two modules are the most important where we study about the vibrations in module 5. We study about the longitudinal and transverse vibration and in the last module 6 we study about the torsional vibration and also some, uh, some the theoretical discussions on the vibration measures measurements will be done. So these are the uh, 6 modules that are coming under this subject. So let's begin with the first module static force analysis in mechanism. So why do we need actually this force analysis in mechanism? Here you can see two animations. One is for the four bar mechanism and another one is for the uh, cam and follower mechanism. So whenever we are designing the mechanism, so if you are considering the left animation, here the green link is the input one and the motion is transmitted to the output red link through the blue link. So here you need to uh, know the forces which are transmitted through each link. Then only you can uh, design the uh, links that means you have to select proper material uh, which are having the required properties and also for required dimensions so that these links will be transferring these forces without failing means all the stress induced or the deformation produced are within the uh, safe limit you have to make sure that this is happening so you need you need to know the force which are acting on all Link. Similarly, in the cam and follower mechanism also you need to design this elements and the spring. So you need to know the forces which are acting. So that is the importance of this force analysis in mechanism. And what is actually the static force analysis and that we will be seeing now. So static force analysis and dynamic force analysis differ in the way whether we are considering the inertia forces or not. So uh, whenever the machine uh, accelerate or whenever the links of a mechanism is moving, the inertia forces will be associated with that because of the inertia property, maybe mass for the uh, linear motion. So if the magnitudes of this inertia forces are small compared to the external forces are, which are acting on this mechanism, then that can be neglected if it is too small, the inertia forces. 
and then such an analysis is known as static force analysis but whenever the magnitudes of inertia forces are uh, very much large comparable to the external force then we have to consider those forces and that kind of analysis is known as dynamic force analysis so in first module we will be studying the static force analysis of mechanisms we will be uh, concentrating on the static force analysis of four bar mechanisms and the slider crank mechanism and in this case we have to study about the static equilibrium static equilibrium conditions of this mechanism under this static uh, force analysis so what do you mean by static equilibrium so whenever a body is in static equilibrium means it is remaining in a state of rest or its motion so a body which is under static equilibrium will be satisfying some conditions so in static equilibrium the net force which is acting or the vector sum of all the forces acting on the body will be equal to zero or mathematically you can write this as sigma f equal to zero and similarly the second condition is the vector sum of all the moments about any arbitrary point is zero so if you are taking moment about any point within the body or link then the net moment should also be zero so this is the conditions for static equilibrium and we will be analyzing the static force analysis uh, based on the static equilibrium for all the all of this mechanism based on these two conditions net force equal to zero and net moment equal to zero so this is the general statement a mechanism which is in static equilibrium if all of its members are also in static equilibrium so a mechanism is consisting of different links so here in four bar mechanism you can have four links uh, and in the nr force analysis we will be we will not be considering the fixed link we will be considering the all other three links only so anyway the other one will also be in static equilibrium so if in a mechanism all of its members are in static equilibrium then the mechanism will also be in static equilibrium see for example or for uh, considering that the an external force of this magnitude f is acting on the link number three so if this force is acting this will be trying to move this link blue link and this will be trying to rotate the uh, red link or the output link number four in the clockwise direction then you can observe and similarly this this will be rotating the input green link two also in the clockwise rotation that means this external force which is acting on the mechanism is disturbing this four bar mechanism from its equilibrium condition so in order to make it or in order to bring this mechanism back to its um, equilibrium condition you can nullify the forces or you can nullify the effect of this forces for example so this external force will be causing the input link to rotate clockwise if you are arresting that motion then this will be coming back to its equilibrium position for that i can apply some coupled or torque in the anti clockwise direction suppose the torque applied is having magnitude t which is cancelling or nullifying the effect of force f which tries to rotate the green input link in the clockwise direction so now this will be bringing back the system into equilibrium so and there for the four bar mechanism is in static equilibrium and from this uh, above statement you can read then all of its members should also be in static equilibrium and all of its members means we will be considering only the three movable members and we will be neglecting or we will not be considering the fixed link for force analysis so fixed link is numbered as one other links are two three and four and here you can classify this members into different types based on the forces which are acting so for that i am just simply drawing the free body diagram so you can consider the green input link which is coming in this orientation this is the link numbered two this is the input link and similarly the free body diagram i am not drawing the free body diagram i am just listing down the different forces which are acting on this members so this is the link number three which is coming and you can consider the uh, link separately that which is the link number four which is the output link so here you need to list out the different forces and you have to classify accordingly this members so let's begin with the link number four which is coming at this rightmost portion that it is drawn separately here so this link is uh, link four is in contact with the link number one at this point and with respect to link number 3 at this point and so force will be exerted on link 4 by link 1 and link 3 and as a general convention we will be using fij means this is the force exerted 
by ling i on j so this is general convention for naming the forces in this mechanism or in this force analysis so we are considering the ling four which is in coming contact with ling number one and three so force exerted by ling one on four will be numbered as or named as f14 and the other force will be numbered as or named as f34 so this ling number four is subjected to these two forces so you can call this as a two force member so this is a two similarly the ling three that is this ling three it's drawn separately here and this is subjected to forces or this ling three is subjected to an external force f and i am naming that force f there and also ling 3 is coming in contact with ling number 2 at this position and ling number 4 at this position so forces will be exerted by ling 2 on 3 which can be named as f23 and force exerted by ling 4 on 3 can be named as f43 so the ling 3 is subjected to three forces so this member or ling 3 can be called as a three force member and finally we are having the input ling 2 and this 2 is making contact with the ling number 1 at this position and ling 2 at this position so forces acting on ling 2 by 1 will be f12 and the other force will be f32 and also along with that for making it back to equilibrium we are applying a torque this torque t is acting so this ling number 2 is subjected to two forces and one torque so this can be called as a two force and one torque member so these are the different types of members which we came across the uh, analysis of mechanism one is two force member three force member two force and one torque member and this naming is based on the uh, number of forces or the torque which are acting on this members so we need to consider the static equilibrium conditions of all of these members and whenever the members are in equilibrium then the entire mechanism will also be in equilibrium so now we will be seeing the equilibrium condition for all of this uh, types of members so here we will be uh, seeing the equilibrium condition for a two force member two force member means a member which is subjected to two forces and let's those two forces acting can be named as f1 and f2 static equilibrium condition means two conditions are there one is the net force sigma f equal to zero and another condition is net moment about any point is zero whenever there are two forces its result and can be zero only the conditions are only when its magnitude is same direction is opposite and line of action is also same for making the net moment zero and uh, you can consider the line of action can be taken like this this forces are acting along this line of action and the directions are opposite so this is the directions and I can name this forces as F1 and F2 and this net force will be becoming zero only when F1 equal to F2. So this will be making this net force equal to zero. And since these are acting along the same line, there is no perpendicular distance in between this uh, forces. That means same line of action loa means line of action so this will be making the net moment equal to zero so this is the static equilibrium condition for a two force member remember the magnitudes of forces are same the directions are opposite and also the line of action is same in a similar way we will be studying the equilibrium condition for a three force member so here you can see a three force member which is arbitrarily shaped subjected to three forces f1 f2 f3 here also we need to have the condition sigma f equal to 0 and sigma m equal to 0 moment about any arbitrary point within this member should be 0 and this can happen only when these three forces the conditions are the three forces result and result and uh, vector is 0 or it is making a closed vector force polygon if you are making the uh, force polygon this first force f1 you can draw in this direction this is representing in the same orientation magnitude this is f1 and you can draw the f2 from its uh, the head of the tail of f2 can be drawn from the head of f1 and then you can draw in this orientation and this vector can be named as f2 and finally the closing side will be represented by the 
third vector f3 so the resultant since this is a closed one the resultant is zero that means the net force is equal to zero so for a three force member to uh, be in static equilibrium condition or sigma f equal to zero the net force should be zero that means the force vector polygon should be a closed one and also for satisfying the condition sigma m equal to zero the there should be a concurrent point where all this point uh, forces are passing through the same point so because of having this concurrent point the net moment will also be equal to zero this is the equilibrium condition for a two force member and now we will be seeing the equilibrium condition for a two force and one torque member so two force and one torque member member which is subjected to two forces and one torque so there will be two forces which will be acting in a parallel direction but their direction is opposite so these forces like this two forces are f1 and f2 and there is also one torque and i will be marking in this direction or in this anti clockwise sense and there is one reason i will be explaining now and this is based on the uh, condition here also for maintaining the static equilibrium condition we need to have sigma f equal to 0 and sigma m equal to 0 so sigma f equal to 0 means net force here two forces are acting and those two forces are f1 and f2 for happening this one the magnitude of f1 should be equal to f2 and there direction should be their direction should be opposite so these two conditions will be making sigma f equal to zero and they are parallel so parallel means these two forces will be uh, will be parallel and the perpendicular distance between their line of action let it be h so the net force is zero but they are making a couple because of the perpendicular distance h between them and that magnitude of couple is f1 into h and this is acting in the clockwise direction and there is it is a two force and one torque member so the one torque is acting since f1 into h is clockwise the torque acting should be in the anti-clockwise sense and its magnitude should be equal to the torque t which is acting and its direction should be anti clockwise so the equilibrium condition for a two force and one torque member now you can understand from this figure those two forces should be equal in magnitude opposite in direction and they are parallel separated by a perpendicular distance h so that the couple produced is f1 into s which is clockwise and the one torque which is having magnitude t should be equal to this f1 into h but this f1 into h should act in one direction here it is clockwise and the torque to be acting on this member should be in the anti clockwise sense so that the entire uh, link or the member which is the two force and one torque member is in equilibrium so these are the an introduction to the static force analysis and now we have studied the different types of members based on the forces or torque which are acting and also we have studied the equilibrium condition for all of these members so in the next video we will be solving a problem for the static force analysis of mechanism so if mechanism in static equilibrium means all of its members are also in equilibrium so that problem we will be seeing in the next video so hope you understand this uh, concept or this theory and thanks for watching